Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is functional testing in 2022, all the different types of functional testing. This will be a two-part video, so this is part one, part two will be out very soon, but we will go over high level all different parts of functional testing. So here's the situation. You're part of a testing team, and they put you in charge of the functional testing. Currently, you have a high level understanding of some functional testing, and you know there's a lot more you can learn to get better test coverage. Remember, test coverage is very important. The earlier a bug is found, the earlier it can be fixed, and the less costly it is to fix it, and the easier it is to isolate where the bug is coming from. As I said, this will be a two-part video because I don't want to overwhelm you with all different types. So in this first part, we'll cover unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and end-to-end -end testing. First, unit testing. Unit testing consists of testing the smallest parts of a feature or application. The purpose of unit testing is to isolate each individual part of written code to make sure it's working as expected. It is important because when you find a bug here, you can easily identify the source of the problem and start working on a solution. Trying to find a source of bugs in later testing practices where other components are involved is more difficult. A unit test should have no dependencies and should test the code of a method or function. As you go up the testing pyramid, which will be a completely different video later on, you'll notice that unit testing is at the bottom because there should be more unit tests compared to integration and system tests. Next, integration tests. So first we tested the individual units. Now we see how those different units interact with each other and if they work as expected. Because of our unit tests, we know each individual method and function work as expected, but now let's see what's the interacting with other methods if they play well. This is very important because often, different modules of the code solution could have been programmed by different people. So, certain interactions, one programmer might have accounted for in his method, but another coder might not have accounted for. So once we put them together, we're gonna find out. Integration tests should be done after unit tests and before system tests. And going back to our pyramid, remember, the unit tests should be the most plentiful, and then after that should be integration tests. And once again, I'll have a whole video later on dedicated just to the testing pyramid. Next, system tests. Finally, we can test the full feature being implemented into our application. It should see how different sections interact with each other as well as other parts of the system. This is the closest you'll get to a test user experience with the new application or feature itself. System testing may also incorporate things such as databases and file systems. Why test a full flow if we're not sure that individual parts are working? This is why system testing is done after the unit and integration testing. Plus, as we go up the testing pyramid, it's hard to isolate where the bug is coming from if we do catch a bug. This will be fewer system tests compared to integration tests, which will be fewer than our unit test. And now finally, end-to-end -end testing. End-to-end -end testing tests the full user flow. So if there's a login screen, we're gonna log in how a normal user will. We're gonna go through the full flow of the application we just put in, and then there's a logout screen, anything like that, make sure they can log out successfully. So remember, end-to-end -end testing is a full flow. There should be no mocking of data in this flow. These tests are very, very important because this is how our end user will realistically interact with our new feature going into our application. Also in our end-to-end -end testing, we can make sure that our backend is interacting properly with our front-end, meaning all our code and backend information is interacting with our GUI or our user interface. So let's say we added new buttons on the UI and a person clicks it and nothing's happening. That means it's disconnect between our backend and front end. So our end to end testing will make sure all that is fully functional. And that's it for part one. As I said, there'll be a part two coming very soon for functional testing, so please stay tuned. Please don't get overwhelmed. I know there's a lot of different types of testing, but please take notes. Remember, this is just a high level introduction. So if you at least talk about at high level, the different functional testing, that should be enough to start you out with. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want a video just like this, please take care. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.